Hey, so Brett here, and um, I am surrounded with Apple devices. Um, we've obviously got an iPad, I've got my iPhone, uh, a MacBook Pro. And rather than give you yet another unboxing video, we figure you've got plenty of those, plenty of uh, how to download an app. What we're trying to do is, is kind of push into some developer spaces. Um, if you've been watching what we've been doing and what a lot of the developers have been doing, everyone's talking about web apps and can web apps kind of circumvent the app store. Are they the way to deal with iPhone plus iPad plus Android? So what I've done here um, is I've taken our radar site, radar.oreilly.com, and I basically skinned it. Um, and, and to be fair, this is running on my local uh, server, so this is not the live site, but you can see here that um, I have basically the radar page here, and this is uh, untouched. I haven't added any HTML. I haven't messed with the structure. And what I've done, I'm going to go ahead and, and open this bad boy up, is I've simply added um, one line, uh, and I'm in VI, so I'm going to be kind of moving pretty quick, but we'll slow down when it gets to the important parts. Um, right here, and if you've done any kind of iPhone web apps, then you're familiar with this line. And what this basically says is it says, if the media type has a screen with a max width of 480 pixels, and that is... Um, the iPhone, which we'll look at in a second, then use this iPhone.css style sheet. And I'll go ahead and pull that up. It's got all kinds of stuff. It would be very boring for you to watch this. I will say, if you've never seen this sort of thing and you're interested in building a web app, there's no objective C here. Jonathan Stark's book, um, Building iPhone Apps, is a really great place to start. And in fact, if you go to the O'Reilly site and search for Jonathan Stark or Building iPhone Apps, uh, we actually have that for free online, so you don't even have to be on Safari. You can see all the code that I used to build this and that I kind of bounced off of. So let's look at this in the browser. Um, this looks just like it always does. So we've got the radar site, nice and normal. Now, uh, in a minute, we're going to look at it on my iPhone. But what, what I want to show you is that because we've used the, um, the max width attribute, I can actually just decrease the width of my browser and it's going to simulate it. So everything looks fine. And then when you hit this spot, you see that it actually bumps down to an iPhone looking interface. So again, pull it out. You've got the sort of normal web interface. Um, squeeze it in and this iPhone.css style sheet is applied and you get something totally different. So, so the point here is that with um, with an iPhone web app, you can actually um, set a CSS that's only loaded when a certain screen width comes in and apply that. And so hitting these apps through a web browser, which we're about to look at, will give you a nice iPhone interface that you can style. So what I want to do now, I want to look at this on the iPhone, and then we're going to talk about why this is actually a little troublesome for the iPad, and there are some real gotchas. So let's see how this looks on the iPhone. Um, in theory, we should get just what we had with the, uh, the small browser is um, we should be able to just go to the page and let that smaller iPhone CSS uh, device width come up. And here it is. Um, totally different look. It's what we saw when we narrowed the browser. And um, this is a pretty, I mean, it's, it's a little bit long, but it looks pretty good on the iPhone. It's clearly been optimized for that. One thing to notice that will come into play a little later um, is way down at the bottom is this stuff that was stuck over on the right of the web page. So these recent posts, the, the Twitter, and the RSS feeds, the active, all this gets shoved down to the bottom because the device itself is not wide enough. So this isn't CSS that's pushing it down there. It's just actually that the um, it's it's actually 480 pixels wide in landscape, and it's um, a little less than that here. It doesn't have room for those, so um, that's not a CSS thing. That's just a device width. But the main thing here is we're getting um, a look and feel that that kind of feels native to the iPhone. So let's see how this looks over on the iPad. Okay, so the iPad is somewhere in between. Um, everything looks good on the iPhone. Let's go into Safari, and I've bookmarked the same site. And what we get right now is essentially what you would get if you were on a web browser, what we saw on the laptop. That's because this is wider than 480 pixels. It's 768 this way, and if you rotate it, it goes to 1024. So our iPhone CSS is not applied, and so we get just a very um, web-centric view. And, and for this page, it's actually not bad. There is this kind of weird dead space over here um, that when it's filled is not quite wide enough to hold what it's filled. So there are still some problems. 
and we've lost any sense of this is a web app. It looks just like something in the web browser. So let's go back and see if we can figure out a way to get some of the iPhone look and feel onto the iPad. Okay, so the problem here is that the iPad obviously has a wider width than, uh, or a greater width than the iPhone. And so if uh, we look back at, at this line that's pulling up the iPhone CSS, what's happening is that this is only being applied if the max width of the, of the device is 480 pixels. And just as an aside here, you can use max device width instead of um, max width. I like using max width because browsers seem to play with it a little bit better. So if we want something to apply to the iPad, what we could do here um, is we could actually make this larger. And what you have, if you go to 1024, that's the max width of the iPad. Now, um, get ready, because this is going to have some maybe unexpected side effects. I'm going to go over to my browser, and I'm going to reload this page. And again, it looks fine small, but notice now that as I'm getting bigger, we're staying at this iPad, and then boom, it, it starts to change, and then we get the big version again. Um, now, did you see what happened there? We, we got two steps, because right here in the middle, we're, we're being styled by the iPhone CSS, but um, as the browser gets bigger, more things fit in it, so we're, we're getting this kind of weird hybrid approach. And this is really the, the trick to the iPad, is that in this in-between width, we're going to get some really weird behavior. So um, go ahead, if you're following along, and we will make all these files available for download, change this to 1,024 pixels, and let's look at it on the iPad and see kind of this weirdness in action. Okay, so back to the iPad. This time, um, what should happen when I reload is we should be picking up the iPhone CSS, and we should get that kind of Apple look and feel. Um, so let me just reload the page here. And kind of... Um, so here's what's happening. This is a little bit weird, and, and I'm going to rotate this so you can see what it does um, sideways. We're getting the style from the iPhone CSS because we said the max width allowable was 1,024, but because of that width, um, we're also getting some style from the website. So we're getting this weird hybrid approach, and that's why we have some things that look very much like they're belonging on the iPhone, but then these other pieces are able to be shoved up top, whereas with a, a narrower width, they went way down to the bottom. And so we get this weird, I mean, these don't even match anymore. You've got kind of a web-centric look here, uh, and you've got these links, but then over here you've got the Apple look. The header's all goofed up. So, so just blowing out the dimensions of what's acceptable for the iPhone CSS style sheet doesn't work. Um, so let's see if we can find a middle ground over here. Okay, so this is essentially the problem with the iPad and web apps. So even though we've heard a lot about web apps, um, the iPad turns out to be kind of this weird hybrid. So um, if you apply an iPhone style sheet to the iPad, it really looks kind of funny. So even though you get some of the Apple styling, you don't get something that feels like it, it fits the iPad. Um, if you try and apply web browser styling, so just throw out the iPhone look and feel, um, th then you have this weird thing where a lot of things don't quite fit. So what I want to do is I want to look at, th there is an approach that's kind of a hybrid here that's going to be much better. So what I've done is I've gone back into my HTML here and I've, I've reapplied the max width of 480, which is the iPhone specific width to my page. Um, and I'm going to reload this thing. And what you'll see is we're back to the original behavior where it looks like a web page and would look like a web page on the iPad. And then when you get down to iPhone size, it jumps into the iPhone approach. Um, the problem with radar right now for a device like the iPad, so if I'm sitting in a, um, a 1,024 pixel environment, then things get lopped off. And, and the most typical way that happens is you've got a main column, and then you've got something beside that. A lot of sites have that. So looking at radar, what we have is we have this main column, which looks great on the iPad, but then we have this column on the right, which is, it just really jams things too much. So what I want to do is I want to build an iPad style sheet that only applies to the iPad and looks like a web page, but we're just going to drop out this stuff on the right. Um, not exactly the most elegant solution, but it will get the point across. So let's add a new uh, style sheet here. 
and this looks just the same as the iPhone one, and let's call it iPad.CSS. And then for the media type, we can use only screen, and we use max width 481, so that gets us above the, um, the iPhone, and then we want to set the, oh, excuse me, that's min width, and that's backward, so let's fix that. Um, so what we want to do is we basically want to grab that between size. So min width is 481. That gets us over the iPhone. And then max width is 1024, which is the, um, the, the device width of the iPad. So save that and reload, and we'll make sure all these files are available if you need them. Um, and I'm going to reload this page, and it should look about the same because I've got this nice and big on my MacBook Pro, so I should be getting... Um, the sort of web-only version of this. So, so here we are now. This is the, the full-on non-iPad, non-iPhone experience. Um, if we get a little bit narrower, you can see right there we drop into the iPad um, range, so we're somewhere between 481 pixels and 1,024 pixels, and we could probably get rid of this little feed burner thing too. But again, the, the point is that you see that you can apply a style just there. And then as we get smaller, we jump into iPhone land again. Um, so let's look at this on the devices and then come back. And, and I want to talk about why this is really um, kind of a nightmare for those of us doing web apps. All right, so this is going to be the most unexciting reload in the history of the iPhone. Um, we've changed a lot of things, but at no time should the iPhone CSS have stopped applying to this device, again, because we kept up with that minimum um, or rather maximum device width of 480. So here it looks just the same. The main thing here though is to see if now we can get sort of a hybrid, that iPhone CSS style sheet, to work on the iPad. So let's check that out again. All right, hopefully third time is the charm. Um, we have the iPad specific CSS that should be applied here. So let me go ahead and reload this guy. And um, this is more or less what we expected. We got the main column. Um, we dropped off the stuff on the right. Really should get rid of that, and I'll leave that to you. Have fun with that. Um, what, what I want you to notice, though, is that even so, there are some real problems. I mean, if we, if we rotate it, um, it starts to look a little bit more like the kind of iPad experience we're all expecting. Um, but even here, I mean, look up at the top. Um, these, these menu options blend over, so that doesn't work. Um, you've, you've still got this main content column, which is a little too small. And you still have um, really no sense of being on in kind of eye device, if you will. So if you like the transitions, those are all gone. If you like the kind of rounded corners, this particular site has some of that, but for the most part it doesn't. Um, you know, gestures are really, really not reliable because we've got the whole page in here. So um, even with an iPad-specific CSS style sheet, it's not going to be as easy as tweaking a few properties. You're probably going to have to do some real rework, and that kind of leads to um, what I think about web apps on the iPad in general. So here's the problem. Yes, we can get a style sheet that will work on the iPhone and a separate style sheet that will work on the iPad and a separate style sheet uh, beyond all that that will work on the web browsers, and really that's not that bad. Um, I'm used to working with tons of style sheets. I'm sure you are too. The problem is, is not so much technically, but how do you deal with um, this hybrid device? And, and here's the thing you need to realize. I'm sitting on a 15-inch MacBook Pro. Um, a lot of people are going to have a system like this or even smaller, the 13-inch or even a 14-inch laptop or a netbook. And so their browser, at what amounts to a nice, comfortable size, is going to fall into the iPad range. So now think about that. What that means is that, that a lot of users are going to be surfing your website or your web app using a web browser on a computer, so they're expecting the full desktop experience, but they're going to be getting your iPad CSS, the 481 to 1024 pixel. So if you look at my desktop again, what I'm, what I'm looking at here is a, a pretty reasonably sized browser and this is the iPad version. I have to go a little bit wider still. What this probably means is that um, we are at least a month or two away from seeing some really good design principles for dealing with the iPad. It is not as simple as throw another style sheet up. Now, um, we're going to do a follow-up to this that will be uploaded a little bit later, and we're going to talk about using JQ Touch 
to simulate the iPhone and iPad look and feel. And that's going to add some, some different wrinkles. It's going to be helpful in some nice ways, and it's going to be problematic in some other ways. Um, so you're going to have to play around. There are no nice solutions here. But the, the key is, this isn't an iPhone. When you're designing for the iPad, you need to realize that if you're using web apps and multiple style sheets, you're probably going to get a lot of people that are hitting your site with a regular desktop or notebook web browser, and they're going to be getting your iPad CSS. So, so we're, we're going to be talking a lot more about that in the next month, figuring out how to deal with that. Um, but web apps are not yet the killer app. You know, native apps have some advantages, and so you really probably want to look at how to do both. Um, Finishing up, I would recommend you check out Jonathan Stark's book for getting into this, Building iPhone Apps. I used the first three chapters heavily here. And then, of course, you can check out this and uh, upcoming videos and screencasts all at O'Reilly.com slash iPad.